Hey there. What's what, up? What what are you what are you wearing? What do you think I'm wearing? Uh something that prevents the aliens from reading your mind. <laughs> no. I'm wearing my helmet of salvation. No, that's so the aliens can't read your mind. <laughs> well, let's get into that. Hey, I'm Andrea Warnock. I'm Nathan Warnock. And you've joined us for Family Friday on the Marriage by Design podcast. And this is a time where we get to talk to you about God's design for family, how we practically live that out. And our topic right now is the armor of God that we see in Ephesians 6. And also aliens. Mm. Yes. So if you're listening to this, in the opening, I was wearing a... Tin foil hat. hat. You were wearing a, a tin, tin foil, foil hat. hat. You know from the movie Signs? Yes. <laughs> like that. And they wore the they wore the tin foil hats so the aliens couldn't read their minds. Well, it was a tin foil hat, but it's my helmet of salvation. Right, but to be fair, verse twelve of uh, Ephesians six says, For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Like, like aliens. Aliens. So and you can take that to the bank. Yeah. So we could be talking about aliens. Oh, but aren't we um, aliens okay. in human form? <laughs> now we're going to So Nathan and I had an art teacher in junior high who we thought at the time was crazy. And now we look back and think she's she crazy. so funny. Crazy, but funny. Yes. The things that she said. But she always called us. She didn't say like, hello class or whatever. She always addressed us as aliens. Aliens and humans. Well, she would say, she humans. She would say, okay, I need all of the humans to fold their hands in front of them and also the aliens in human form. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and everybody would be like, what That's are you I talking about? You. <laughs> but it's great. We laughed. And shoot, now we're 30 and we're still talking about I it. I know. Oh, shoot. Mrs. Ruff, right? Anyway, she was funny. Yeah. Fun. Okay. <clears throat> so, as Andrew said, we are talking about the armor of God and specifically how do we help our kids understand what the armor of God is so that they can take it upon themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've started every episode, we're going to start this one the same way, by reading Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. And that reads like this. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places like aliens. It doesn't say like aliens. <laughs> Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on the salvation, put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. <coughs> Excuse me, and pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan. That the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. I am in chains now, Paul speaking, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Great. Yeah, so Paul was writing this and he was he was surrounded. I mean, he, he lived his life with soldiers. Right. At the time. Literally. He was in, he was in prison. And um, yeah, we can leave that open. So he was writing about the, the armor of God as he was up close and personal with with soldiers so we can see so going back to what our episodes have been about the first episode in this series was about just kind of the beginning where he talks about knowing that our fight is not against flesh and blood it's not against the humans that we live life with but it's against the unseen world it's against our enemy satan and his <coughs> and his Excuse army me. And mm -hmm. knowing that, that our spiritual, our battles are, are against Satan. And then he talks several times about stand firm. And right. that our, our power to fight battle and our power to stand in that battle and fight it, it comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from us. We have to get that from the Lord. And our 
armor then that we wear is so important for spiritual battle battle it's great. It's great. and um you know it takes it takes our, the armor of God isn't something that just happens when you become a believer, that you just, oh, you have it on all the time and you're good to fight spiritual battle. It, it's things that we can really la- be lacking in at times um, and things that really take intentionality to put on to, like last was it, last week we talked about our shield of faith. It starts out small. And as we grow in our faith with the Lord, that gets bigger and bigger. And so we're not just, we don't just immediately, um, upon salvation, have the armor of God on and we're ready for battle. And we're just, you know, perfect decorated soldiers. Right. So, okay. So we talked, we've talked about kind of the intro leading up to all the pieces. And then the first piece is the belt of truth. Yep. Excuse me, and then the breastplate of righteousness, and then our feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. That's yep. what's on our shoes or on our feet, and then the shield of faith is what we talked about last week. And then today we're talking about um, the helmet, helmet of, salvation. of salvation. Yeah, I don't know why I couldn't think of that for a <clears throat> One of those moments. So yes, so we're talking about the helmet of salvation. Okay, so my first, and this is going to be a short episode because there's not a whole lot to say about it. Um, but my first thought... It's critically thought, important, it's, but it's pretty straightforward. Of course, straight very important, yes. Yeah. My first thought, though, was, why are we putting on the helmet of salvation? We're talking... He's talking to believers here. Right. Paul is. He's writing, yes. writing to believers. <clears throat> salvation isn't something that comes and goes. Right. It's it's something that we make a choice and, want, you know, once saved, always saved. So what is this about putting on our helmet of salvation? And so realizing that he's not talking about, you know, your salvation <laughs> being being something that you can take it or leave it, you know, right. take it and leave it and all that kind of thing. But it's, but it really has to do with our hope. <clears throat> right. The confidence of our salvation. Hope right. of our salvation. The, yeah. And not hope that we are saved, but no. that our salvation gives us hope <clears throat> yeah. for what's to come. Our right. hope in Christ. Right. So having the understanding that that he's not talking about yeah salvation in you're making the choice to have to be saved and then maybe you're not making the choice to be saved you know it's right you, you make the choice once um but that's that was kind of my first thought the first time that i started digging into the sure the armor of god is that doesn't really make sense yep. and i think having <clears throat> making sure our kids understand stand that is vitally important Right, it, it totally changes our understanding of Ephesians six because it does say take up the the helmet of salvation, mm-hmm. and but when you understand it as the confidence of your salvation or yes. the hope in your salvation, that is something that we have to take up. I mean, how how many people do we know that have shared? You know, hey, have you, <clears throat> have you ever given your life to Christ? Yeah, man, I've done it like forty times. Right, <clears throat> because. They do that. They give their life, commit their life to the Lord, but Satan starts wiggling in there, right? The first time they have a thought they shouldn't have or look at something they shouldn't look at. And Satan starts playing that confidence game of, well, real Christians don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really love Jesus, you wouldn't have that thought. And it starts to erode your confidence. And so the helmet that we have to choose to take up, sorry, I have a a fog in my throat, as (laughs) the kids say. Um, what we really have to do is choose to take up the confidence of that salvation exactly. that we see in the Word of exactly. God. Exactly. Yeah, actually, read First Thessalonians five eight. You bet. So it says, "But let us live in the light, be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation." Yeah, and that's just exactly what we've been saying: is <clears throat> let us be clear-headed. That's the purpose of the helmet <laughs> of salvation is the clear-headedness of our salvation, of our hope, of what Jesus gave us and what we've the gift that we've accepted. And we know that we're saved because of the fruit that we bear. Right. So <clears throat> the confidence of our salvation is, is the important part there. Yeah. So, okay, what was the helmet? Well, of course, the helmet was... Protect um, your melon. <clears throat> yeah, to protect... Your head, which is kind of an important part of your body. <laughs> you, they tell me. You need that. And oftentimes it was made of leather, leather and metal. 
Mm-hmm. Both leather and metal, mostly metal, of course, because leather is not going to protect you that much. Actually, do you remember? This is really a random aside. Do you have you seen pictures of when football players used to wear just yes leather, leather helmets? helmets? What was the point of that? Anyway, <coughs> have same high protection. thing. If there's just leather helmets in battle, what's the point of that? <laughs> what's the point of that? Anyway, they're were, cheap though. Well, <laughs> yeah, not doing a whole lot to protect you though. So yeah, purpose is to true. protect your head. Um, in in battle when the soldiers wear them, wore them, of course. And they're yep. always going to go to battle with their helmets. That so doesn't make any sense to, to not. Um, it was also to... For several... I mean, they would adorn their helmets, too, with Yeah, this, is an, important, this or, is an important point. Right, with plumes or feathers or some sort of decoration Mm -hmm. oftentimes helmets were had some sort of decoration on them Mm -hmm. and for varied reasons it could show your rank it could show what side you were on in battle um it could show what else was the purpose of that well in some cases it was to intimidate yeah because it would have you know, might have a mask on the front that made your face look contorted or scary. Right. Um, but it was clearly designed, the helmets were clearly designed to give off an aura to those who saw the individual wearing the helmet. Mm-hmm. And that's true even up to today. A lot of military hats in the United States military contain, or helmets, contain the rank of the individual yep. wearing the hat or the helmet. It's meant to convey something about the person wearing the helmet. Right. Right. So, usually had some sort of decor item on it. It um, represents, as we can see in Ephesians 6, it represents salvation. Right. It represents our, the hope, our hope of salvation. And our hope gives us an eternal perspective, knowing that even the battles that we fight here on earth, while we're here on earth, they're temporal battles. Right. And our, our lives are made for eternity and right. so this is a temporary battle um so our hope our hope gives us an eternal perspective our helmets are there to sh- to shield us from the discouragement or the doubt the desire to give up a retreat you know because it should confidence. be yeah protecting our brain giving us yep. confidence um <clears throat> you know the the doubt or the hopelessness of losing a war knowing that my salvation gives me hope in the Lord, knowing that He always, He's Almighty, He's sovereign, He wins. He's the He's the ultimate victor. Right. So, um, right. So, so, yeah. so, how do we? First of all, what what's the importance of that for our kids? Like the the helmet of salvation. Like, what? Why is that important for for our kids to understand at a young age? About. The just, helmet of, about yeah, what? I mean, th- just that that assurance of salvation and the confidence of the salvation that we had, that right? We have right because oftentimes battle, spiritual battle is happening between our ears. I agree. You know, I I can't think of many spiritual battles that are happening. There are there are some, of course, but that are happening outside of our heads. There are so many spiritual battles fought in your mind. Yeah, I'm I'm about to make a minority report uh, <laughs> uh, analogy here. So if you've seen that documentary, um, you'll you'll remember documentary. This, but but uh, it was with uh, Tom Cruise, and the whole it's idea of the movie. movie. It is a really fun movie, but he works for essentially the police. But they have this machine that, without spoiling anything, <clears throat> produces these little balls that roll down, and the balls predict murders. And so his law enforcement agency actually will grab these balls that just have a name on them and they'll look up the person and then they'll go to that person and actually arrest them before they commit the murder. My point in this analogy is there's two kinds of balls in that movie. Yellow ones, which are the bulk majority of them. That's where someone was thinking about killing someone. They're going to do it. They know when they're going to do it. They know how they're going to do it. Clearly... That's a temptation going yeah. on inside their head, right? Just like the majority of the sins that we get caught up in are going on. In, the war's being waged inside of our head mm-hmm. before we before we do it. Then there's the red balls. And the red balls are 
in Minority Report are the murders that come up spur of the moment. And those are the exciting ones for his group because they don't have very much time to react, mm-hmm. right? Because the, the, the murder isn't premeditating it, it's coming up. Yep. That does happen in our lives from time to time, right? Maybe something pops up on your internet browser that is completely out of left field, but that is something you know you shouldn't be looking at you know we get those collateral attacks someone you know you 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 know catch a view of someone at the mall or your next door neighbor or whatever and and you know you should look away those types of things or or a judgmental thought that pops in your head but the bulk majority of the battles we're fighting are but regardless battle those battles are yeah, they're still in your head mind. yeah that's I exactly mean, right the question is just what are they is it a long battle or is it something that you get ambushed yeah, by right and in either of those cases <clears throat> whether you've been fighting in a battle for two hours in which case you need a helmet to protect you or whether you just got ambushed by the enemy you still need your helmet right, right? so either way that helmet of salvation offers us protection and hope against those battles right yeah our brains are powerful machines no and the enemy knows how to use them against us no doubt um so we get and we can so quickly be be used by the enemy with our own brains right <clears throat> that's i think the importance for our kids because right. i think sometimes our kids don't understand how much control they have over their actions right they're just kind of learning that sure um and so to help them understand hey when your brother makes you angry and you want to sock him in the eye, mm-hmm. that's the battle. Right. Because right? I think sometimes our kids are so they, driven by emotion. Well, and don't. oftentimes they think, I, I, it seems like they think of battle as something you, you see. Right. You see right. it happen right. in front right. of you, you right. know? Right. And right. that's not the case with spiritual battle oftentimes. Right. So how do we teach this particular aspect of the armor of God to yeah, our kids? Yeah, I kind of... We kind of struggled coming up with how do you teach the kids about this because it's just hard. First of all, of course, we want to make sure our kids understand salvation, and that's a constant. The gospel message. Yep, that's that's a constant thing. That even even if they are saved, we're we're constantly talking to them about that and and um, you know discussing the gospel and all that sort of thing. So that's something that they're growing in Mm. understanding throughout hopefully their whole lives. So that's part of the helmet of salvation is really understanding the gospel and understanding our salvation better and better throughout the years. And, and you, sure. you don't come to a point where you're like, oh, I was saved right then. And then I under- and that's the point that I understand. I understood the whole gospel. Mm-hmm. You know, I understood salvation as a, in perfectly. I think it's always it's always something that we're working towards. So making sure that our kids are constantly hearing about salvation that we're understanding that is one way um but then also an idea i had is you know maybe everybody's helmet would look differently uh would look different based on what they struggle with so maybe my helmet of salvation that's protecting me um, and to protecting my brain and also giving me hope would look different than Nathan's. Maybe it would cover my ears and have little earplugs <laughs> that I could <laughs> that I could you know That's put great, in man. and pull out sometimes. Um, maybe it would it would um, shield my peripheral vis- vision so that I'm super hyper focused on the battle in front of me mm. um, and not on the surrounding busyness of the world or parade that's going on whatever whatever you know maybe it's it's keeping my focus on the battle it's good man. maybe it's uh, well i don't know what whatever it is maybe it's covering my mouth sometimes um when i shouldn't be speaking in battle uh so talking with your kids about what do you think your your helmet would look like i think my helmet would need one of those things where <laughs> this is going to be odd to explain you know when Somebody is on a, I think it's called a transfusion machine where, is that what it is? I don't know. Whatever it is where it takes your blood out and it scrubs it and it puts it back in. Dialysis machine? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Dialysis machine. Okay, my helmet would need something where it takes my brain out and it scrubs it and it puts it back in. That's not a thing. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I didn't say the technology had to exist. Is that what your tinfoil hat was for? Yeah, it took my brain out and it scrubbed it. You know, but... 
it can be funny, but oh, in yeah, reality, totally. just having an understanding of the things that I struggle with. Yeah, sure. And what my helmet, what I think my helmet would look like for battle right to have these spiritual battles that's, that's a great conversation to have with your kids yep. so mine would have some sort of weird dialysis thing to scrub my brain and put it back in <laughs> and that would plug, oh, plug my it. ears you know to satan's attack those would be big things for me and yeah it's good you know then okay what would your helmet look like and having right and and mine would probably have i really love feathers so it would have feathers just to as an adornment mm-hmm, have an adornment it's great that's yeah. that's a really good thing to talk about with our kids and it helps them to start thinking about being introspective yeah and what are the things that i struggle with and how can what the bible says about those things help protect me against those attacks right it's great yeah the next one i think you had talking <clears throat> about the adornment and the and the crown and what we're portraying <clears throat> yeah so uh, the, the the Bible also talks about our salvation as the crown of salvation, which clearly is an adornment. And we talked about how so many, even military um, helmets, are adornments for the person wearing them. And so, you know, it'd be, it'd be interesting to ask your kids, well, okay, if I'm wearing a football helmet, what do I want people to know about mm-hmm. me? If I'm wearing a helmet with, you know, a Chicago Cubs or a, St. Louis Cardinals or a New York Yankees logo on it. What am I trying? What am I wanting people to know about me? The things that we wear on our heads are designed to tell other people yeah, around us marketing. about us. Yep. So, I think it's also important for our kids to understand salvation. The salvation that we wear as a helmet, the confidence of our salvation, it also is intended to impact those around us, right. but in a different way, because. As James says, faith without works is dead. And that doesn't mean in order to prove your faith, you have to do the works. It means if you've given your life to Christ and submitted your life to him, the works will follow because he's now in charge. Right. In and so, American gospel, they say, it, they say it, faith equals salvation plus works. That's right. Yeah, that's your right. faith produces salvation, which produces works. Plus the works, yeah. right. And so I think the thing to ask our kids is, what is your helmet of salvation say to those around you, yeah. right? And and to help, particularly maybe with older kids, to help them understand, well, you know what? I know I have an anger problem, but when I put my helmet of salvation on, I, I'm i more understanding and loving of those people around me, yeah. right? The helmet impacts the lives of those people around. Yeah, and so what is it saying about, about you that. and what is it saying about the Lord? Right, because ultimately our helmet does nothing if doesn't reflect mm-hmm. glory onto God. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the last idea I had was to keep some sort of helmet or crown or, I mean, it could be as dumb, silly as a tinfoil hat thing, right? Oh dear, it's back on. <laughs> keep it around your house. And you, and when you recognize that your child is struggling with the, the way that they're feeling or, or that they're lacking hope or they're listening to Satan's lies, um, they're... Whatever that is, you recognize there's something going on between their ears that's that's a lie from Satan. This is spiritual warfare. Give them that that totally. representation of I recognize I think you're in battle and put your helmet of salvation on. Put yep. your arm put your armor on. Skin. Right, you like I'm fighting with you, I'm praying with it's you. Fire, man. And it's great. and just as a just as a visual for them to to recognize, yeah, I'm in spiritual battle and I'm not going to let Satan win this. Yep. So it's good. I need to put on the armor of God. It's good. And it has the added benefit of reinforcing with your kids that you want to help them fight mm-hmm. these these battles. Absolutely. Yep. You're not really against good, them. You're with them. Really good. It's great. So that's what we have for Helmet of Salvation. Next week we get to talk about the sword of the spirit. Oh yeah, offensive weapon. Finally. Yep. yep. Finally, we get a weapon. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> That's great. Yep. Very good, babe. Thanks so much for leading us in that. I really sure. appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have thoughts or comments about how we can better teach our kids about the helmet of salvation, love to have you put that in the comments below or in the comments to this 
podcast on our Facebook page at Marriage by Design Podcast on Facebook. You also can always send us an email at Marriage by Design Podcast at gmail.com. Otherwise, guys, we will see you on Sunday evening for our weekly live event. Sunday Night Live. <clears throat> Love to have you come on, ask us some questions. Also, if you did not have a chance to check out our Marriage Monday video, We've started talking about divorce and would love to have you check that video out as well. Until then, guys, thanks so much for joining us. And remember, God is for your family. Have a great weekend. Hey, thanks for joining us on Marriage by Design. If you were impacted by this video, like it by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe, and once you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes release. Excellent. Also, one of the huge pillars of our show is interactivity between us and you. So we would love you to comment down in the comments below if you have thoughts about this video, or if you have questions or other things you'd like to, like to see considered in the future. In addition, if you'd like, you can email us. That's marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at Marriage by Design Podcast, or you can find us on Facebook by searching Marriage by Design Podcast. Finally, if you want to, you can tweet at us. We do have a Twitter account that is at Marriage X Design. Thanks, and have a great day. <laughs>